Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss um, the concept of open balls, uh, closed balls and spheres in another metric space, and in this case we're going to look at the uh, complex plane. The complex plane. So the complex plane uh, consists of, um, is a metric space uh, consisting of a set, and the set is all complex numbers. Uh, so all things of the form A plus BI, where A and B are elements of the real numbers. Okay, uh, so you have all complex numbers, and uh, it consists then of a metric uh, where the distance between two complex numbers, so let's say the distance between x and y, where x and y are both complex numbers, so x we could say is equal to x1 plus x2i, and uh, y is equal to y1 plus y2i, uh, so they're both equal to complex numbers. The distance between them uh, is equal to uh, the modulus of uh, the complex number y minus the complex number x. Uh, so that is the way we're going to define uh, the, um, the uh, metric uh, for the complex plane. Uh, so let's uh, just make sure that this is indeed a metric space. Uh, so firstly, uh, we can say that... Um, so firstly, uh, the distance function between x and y, we want to check that it's going to be a non-negative real number. So we want to check that it's equal to a non-negative real number. Well, the modulus function is indeed going to map you onto a um, going to map you onto a uh, non-negative real number. So the modulus function attaches to every complex number a non-negative real number. Y minus x is whatever it is. It is a complex number because y and x are complex numbers. So when you subtract them, you get another complex number. Uh, and therefore, we're just taking the modulus just a complex number, therefore it is going to end up as some uh, non-negative real number. Okay, two, uh, we want to make sure that the distance between a point and itself is equal to zero. Uh, so uh, the distance between a point and itself in here, uh, well, by definition, the distance between a point and itself is going to be the modulus of x minus x. If you add the additive inverse of a complex number to itself, you get to the complex number zero. Now, the modulus of the complex number zero is, defi is defined to be equal to zero, uh, so indeed the distance function between x and itself is going to be equal to zero. Conversely, we want to make sure that if the distance between two complex numbers x and y is equal to zero, uh, we want to make sure uh, that uh, this implies that x is equal, actually equal to y. So this, in, uh, by definition, if the distance between x and y is equal to zero, then the modulus of y minus x is equal to zero. Now, the only way the modulus of a complex number can equal zero is if that complex number is, in fact, equal to zero. The only complex number with modulus zero is the zero complex number. Uh, so this uh, implies that uh, y minus x is equal to zero. Uh, so that implies that y is indeed equal to x. Okay, uh, so that's the um, that's checked uh, property two. Uh, property three, uh, we want to make sure that uh, the distance function is symmetric. So the distance between x and y is equal to the modulus of y minus x. Uh, but then we can um, we can say uh, we want to multiply. Uh, by uh, negative 1 inside uh, and basically that's not going to affect the modulus so if you ne multiply a complex number by a negative uh, by minus 1 it does not affect the modulus of that complex number uh, so uh, this is going to give us the modulus of x minus y which by definition is just the distance between y and x okay so we get symmetry and now what we want to check is the triangle inequality uh, so uh, let z be some arbitrary other element of the complex plane, i.e. z is equal to some z1 uh, plus z2i, uh, where z and 1 and z2 are real numbers, uh, then uh, we want to make sure that the distance between x and y, what we were required to prove, so RTP required to prove, the distance between x and y is less than or equal to the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y. So, by definition, we know that the distance between x and y is equal to y minus x, the modulus of y minus x. And we know that this is equal to the modulus of y minus z plus z minus x. Uh, because uh, all I've done there is subtract off z and then add z back on. So this doesn't affect uh, the complex number inside here that we are actually taking the modulus of. Now, it's a very nice property of the complex modulus uh, function that the modulus of a plus b is less than or equal to the modulus of A plus the modulus of B. The reason for this is if you 
think about the complex plane, then the modulus function, if you have a complex number here, let's say a, then the modulus function effectively ascribes to each complex number the length of the line, uh, i.e. if you got a ruler out and measured it, the length of the line from the origin uh, to the value a. So if you add two complex numbers together, so let's say uh, this is uh, the complex number b here, then if you add them together, it means it corresponds to doing something like this, adding the two vectors together like that, uh, and making a parallelogram like that. And basically, all this inequality here is saying is that the length of this line here, which is the modulus of a plus b, uh, so let me get my blue pen to highlight it, this line here down the centre going to up here is the complex number a plus b. That line is going to be less than uh, the length of, uh, let me get another pen, where the highlight is gone, ah, here they are, um, the length of this line plus the length of that line, so it's just basically, um, it's, um, uh, it's basically the triangle inequality, uh, we know that that is true uh, because of um, geometrical principles here, you can prove that from a symbolic uh, point of view, but it's better to view it as a, as a um, geometrical intuition. Yeah, obviously, uh, if you're going to do it rigorously, you can't just rely on a picture, because, of course, this here exists. The theory of abstract metric spaces uh, exists to rigorize geometry, so you can't prove it using geometry, uh, but you can prove this from an algebraic standpoint of view. Uh, point of view. So, um, it's nicer to view it in terms of the picture, but there, there is an algebraic proof, and it's not difficult to prove that algebraically. Okay, uh, so uh, the uh, distance between x and y uh, is equal to the modulus of y minus z plus z minus x. Uh, so we can split this up like this and say that this is less than or equal to the modulus of y minus z uh, plus the modulus of z minus x. Uh, so a is equal to, we're saying a is equal to y minus z and we're letting z minus x take the place of b here and then we're just splitting it up like that. Uh, but this is exactly the definition of the distance between z and x, z and y rather, and this is the, exactly the definition of the distance between x and z. Uh, so we can just, you know, uh, by the commutative property of addition, uh, we can rewrite this as the distance between x and z plus the distance between z and y. Okay, and we get that this uh, is greater than or equal to the distance between x and y. Uh, so there we have it, the triangle inequality. Okay, uh, so uh, that's uh, how you prove uh, that this uh, metric that we've defined on the complex plane is indeed a metric space. And it's basically just, if you view the complex plane as representing uh, the real two-dimensional, you know, a infinitely um, large two-dimensional plane, uh, then uh, the metric that we've defined on here is effectively the usual sense of the metric, um, i.e. Uh, if you have two complex numbers, um, a and b, uh, and we want to know what the distance between them is, it's the length of that line is the intuitive way of viewing what we've defined on here. Okay, uh, so if we want to look at open balls in this metric space, then it should be pretty intuitive because uh, the metric is one of these intuitive metrics uh, where it has a nice picture. So if we look at the complex plane and we say take some picture point at x, uh, so x is an element of the complex plane, so it's an x element of our uh, set underlying our metric space, and we want the ball, uh, the open ball, centre the x of some radius r, then that is going to look like, oh dear, uh, should do it in dashed, uh, you should always draw open balls with a dashed line to show that it does not include the boundary points. So this has radius r, basically, and it does not include all those points which are actually at a distance r uh, from uh, the complex number x. So it basically consists of all those complex numbers, so the complex numbers, z is an element of the complex numbers, such that the modulus of z minus x is less than r. And that um, forms this uh, ball here. So it contains all of those points inside this uh, dashed line out here. So all of that. So it's a great big set, a subset of the complex numbers. OK, uh, so that's what an open ball looks like. If we take a closed ball, uh, the closed ball uh, around a point x of, of radius r is equal to all the points, uh, z is an element of the complex number, such that z minus x is less than or equal to r. And remember this, I'm just filling this in as the distance function in our metric space. If we take another point over here, x, uh, which 
uh, and we're taking uh, the closed ball of radius r around that, then uh, we draw that with a solid line, and it consists of all the points within that uh, within that solid line and including that solid line. So it consists of absolutely all of the points there, like that. Uh, so that's what that looks like. So that's a closed ball. And then if we draw, if we think about spheres, a sphere uh, centered at the point x of radius r is the set of all points in the complex plane such that the distance between that point and the point x is actually equal to r. And if we take a little point x down here, then the sphere is actually just the boundary of one of these closed balls over here. So it does not include all the points inside the ball, and it just includes the points on the boundary like that. So that is a sphere in the complex plane. So, so um, open balls uh, and closed balls take on these sort of disks here. So often you will see these uh, called, instead of open balls, you might see them referred to as open disks if you take a course on complex analysis. Um, and uh, these are, and spheres take on the form of circles. Uh, so uh, that's all I've got to say for this video. In the next video, we'll look at another example of um, open balls, closed balls, and spheres. Uh, this time, in a more abstract space, we'll look at it in the concept in the in the um, in the context of a uh, function space.